Hello, my name is Roger Vance. I'm a program manager for GSpeed Accessibility. In this role, I work with our product teams as they make our products much more accessible. I also work with teams across Google who are also working on making our products more accessible. I also work with some external teams as they collaborate with us on improving our product accessibility. And I also do informational sessions externally like this to help people understand and know about our accessible features and how to use our products. So today I want to give a short introduction on what is accessibility, why is it important, and I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the G Suite accessibility features that we have that empower inclusion. And then I'm going to wrap up with some more resources and information for you. So in the world, the estimate is that 15% of the world population has a type of a disability. And this can range from someone who's, say, cognitive impaired, motor impaired, deaf or hard of hearing, or visually impaired. And for those, 15% of the population amounts to about 1 billion people in the world. So again, it's a huge amount of people who have a disability. And to give you an idea of the scale of that, there are actually more people in the world who are colorblind than those who speak English as a native language. And when we talk about it, you know, again, it's 1 billion people, but it also is one person at a time. And in fact, I myself am blind and I use a screen reader every day at Google as I do my job using our tools plus other tools. In fact, at this point, I've been using uh, head headphones plugged in so you won't hear my screen reader. So now I'm gonna unplug the headphones and then you'll start hearing from this point on the screen reader. So you're experiencing what I'm experiencing as I'm going through the rest of this presentation. Slider, 84%. Page change, slide six of 26. Accessibility is more than a screen reader. So when we do talk about accessibility, a lot of people think it's a screen reader for those who are blind. And yes, that is one of the important tools that we have. But there are also other tools like magnification and contrast, which I'll touch on again later in this presentation. There are switch devices for people who are motor impaired, which means like they, instead of using a full keyboard, they may be just using essentially a two button keyboard, or they may be using eye gaze to navigate around the screen and work with the, interact with the screen. Or they may even use voice control, like uh, some of the features we have on our mobile devices. Also for someone who's deaf or hard of hearing, there's a closed captioning that's available, which in this case, I'm actually running closed captioning with this presentation, and I'll talk about that again later on. But not everybody that is disabled is using assistive technology. Sometimes they are just doing things slightly differently but the two things do add up to give you a total solution and allows more inclusion in the community, schools, and workplaces. Page change, slide seven of 26, empower inclusion. <clears throat> so what does the accessibility do? Well, one of the things it does is it empowers inclusion, which means we have a huge impact on people's lives. For example, if you're a student, the accessibility may help the student to be mainstreamed in the classroom with their teammates, or they may be using the same technology as their classmates which means that they're going to feel more included and be able to be more comfortable, more productive, more, and participate more into their classroom activity. And that's going to continue through you know, grade school, high school, college, or even after you get out of college to any place that you're doing where you need to learn things. You know, I myself constantly need to be learning, and I do that using the assistive technology and screen reader. Also, the you know, accessibility has a new impact on somebody's career or jobs. You know, that being able to have the assistive technology allows somebody to get a job and advance their career. In fact, if our products didn't work with a screen reader, I would actually be unemployed. And I much prefer being employed. So if, the, you know, because if I wasn't, instead of doing this presentation recorded here from our home, I would be at home unemployed. So again, it's all very important for employees, for success. <clears throat> you know, also talking about, you know, the inclusion aspect of the better the technology works, the more person can be able to participate in the things in the job and be able to advance and be more productive and have a much more successful and rewarding career to help them do. It also inclusion, the accessibility features also allow more inclusion in community and society and also with your friends and family because then you're able to communicate with them, connect with them, participate in meetings and, and um, training, just all kinds of different things that you can do by being able to use the accessibility features to be more included. Page change, slide nine of 26 G Suite. So when I talk about G Suite, this is our communication, collaboration, and productivity tools, which includes products like Gmail, Slides, which I'm using here, and also Google Meet, which I'm also using for this recording. And then there's also, say, Drive and Docs and Sheet and Slides. 
in Classroom and a lot of other products that make up the G Suite suite of products. Page change. Slide 10 of 26, supported assistive technology. The way thing we've done with our technology is we've designed it to work with the tools and the technology or platforms and the technology that you're using. For example, you know, screen reader like I'm using here, it could be also the contrast magnification that will be used on, say, the, the, the products that you're using, be it a mobile device, an Android or an iOS device, a desktop computer or laptop computer, be it a Windows or a Chromebook, which is what I'm using here, or even a Mac. And what we designed it is for is that when you use the technology that you want to use, our products are designed to work with it. Page change. Slide 11 of 26, automated real-time <laughs> captioning. So one of the features I want to talk about first is the automated real-time captioning, which is what's running right now in slides, where as I'm speaking, our servers and computers are taking that and converting it into text and showing it on the screen. And that continues throughout their presentation. Another form of real-time captioning is what we have in Google Meet, where the client, you know, the user can turn on captioning at their own particular device. So, and it'll also show you who's been saying what. The kind of the difference is when you're using this caption that I'm using here, it's broadcast to everybody that's viewing the presentation. Whereas if you're using the captioning that's in Google Meet, that is applied to just the individual device the person is using. The other thing is when you record a, say, a presentation with the slides, then the captioning is part of the recording. Whereas in Google Meet, if you do the recording, the captions is not part of the main content. It's only at the end of the individual person. Page change. Slide 12 of 26, closed captions. But what you can do then is if you do make a recording, you can put it in the Google Drive, and then you can add a caption file to that so that when somebody's playing it back and they do one of the captions, they can turn it on and have captions along with the recording of the audio and the video. Page change. Slide 13 of 26, keyboard. So another feature that we've done is we design our products to work with a keyboard or just a keyboard so you don't have to use a mouse, which is important to somebody who's say, you know, like I am, where I can't see where the mouse is, that I need to be able to use the keyboard to navigate and interact with content and read information. Also that holds true for say somebody who's motor impaired using a, like a switch device, where they need to be able to navigate and perform everything using the keyboard. The other thing about our keyboard features, for example, say you're in Gmail, you can press the letter C to start a compose. Or if you're in Google Docs, you can press Control Alt 2 to apply heading level two. By doing those, we've actually provided the you know, keyboard shortcuts that allows people to be more productive and faster. So we can actually turn somebody into a power user by using the keyboard shortcut. So in many ways, even though I'm a screen reader user, I'm a power user because I know the shortcuts, which allows me to be more efficient and more productive doing my job, which applies to a lot of other people who are doing, who are using the keyboard. So another powerful feature we have in G Suite or Google Docs is voice typing, editing, formatting. This is where you can turn on the, using the microphone on your computer, say here in the Chromebook, that when you're in Google Docs, you, what you say is basically you're dictating the content into your document. So you can speak, you know, say a report or a memo or whatever it is that you're wanting to create. Then you can go back and you can do formatting. For example, you can bold information or italicize it. You can also do editing. Say so if you don't like something, you can go in and select it and delete it all with your voice. And these type of features, again, you know, whether they're useful, is it allows somebody to be able to get beyond the point of trying to figure out how to type and get content created. They can get onto the task and actually you know, enter the information. A little bit of a story here is <clears throat> we were at a conference one time and we had a woman walk up to us and say, I want to thank Google. And we're like, for what? She says, I used to struggle at home with our daughter doing their homework in the evening. But when we learned about the voice typing feature, they were able to, you know, the student was able to focus and do the work. It was a whole lot easier, which made the family situation much happier. The student was much more successful in school just because they were able to use an accessibility feature, which allowed for better inclusion into the home and the school environment. Page change. Slide 15 of 26 magnification. So another feature we have is where we are designed to work with magnification that the user will be using. For example, on the Chromebooks here, you can turn on magnification. And as you do, or, you know, there's the moving around and panning the screen, the content is being magnified up to say 2X or even 16X so that somebody who has lost some of the vision is able to see the content. For me, 
I suffer from retinitis pigmentosa, which is over a couple decades, I went from having essentially 20-20 vision to the point now where I have basically no vision at all. Sometimes I have a little bit of light perception. You know, and then with the magnification, it you know, moves around so that it's basically kind of like having a magnifying gra glass that's moved around on the screen to allow somebody to see it. Page change, slide 16 of 26, high contrast, dark mode. So another thing we do that's also related to somebody with visual impairments is to you know, increase the contrast. And sometimes this is, instead of saying having you know, black letters on a dark gray background, somebody may want like to have black letters on a white background or the other way around where you have white letters on a black background. And there's a couple ways that contrast is done. Is you can be through um, technology that you use on a laptop and stuff, or you can go into Gmail and turn on a high contrast screen or with many of our products, we now support dark mode where you can go in and have essentially inverted you know, text so that's easier to see. And one thing I want to mention is on the magnification and the high contrast is you, know, you may have to go into, like if you're using doc sheets and slides, go into the tools menu, tools menu, go under accessibility settings and enable magnification support. Page change, slide 17 of 26. So another type of assistive technology we use and support is screen readers. Again, you know, as I'm going from slide to slide, you're hearing the screen reader verbalize the title of the slide, which is important to me so that I can have confidence that I'm on the slide that I'm talking about and also get a reminder which slide so I know what to be talking about. But the screen readers provide contextual information relevant to what the user is doing. So if you start navigating around the screen, it may give you the label of the button or other um, you know, radio buttons or checkboxes to read information or it's a way to read through the content, like the entire document, paragraph at a time, word at a time, character at a time, depending on what your needs are as a user. And here we support you know, some of the main screen readers, like the ones that are built into, say, Android, which is TalkBack, or iOS, which is VoiceOver, or Chromebooks, which is the Chromebox screen reader, which we're using here, or Mac with VoiceOver. Or if you're on Windows, we support the JAWS and the NVIDIA screen readers. Page change, slide 18 of 26 Braille. Also related to screen readers is Braille output. So I myself use, some sp use spoken output where it's going through a text-to-speech engine so I get the information audibly as I'm using the screen reader. But some users will use a Braille display where the information is basically put onto a Braille cell, which is six dots. So they end up you know, getting the information through their fingertips. Page change, slide 19 of 26 Live Edits and Docs. So the things we we're just talking about were really where we're kind of using, you know, the platform and the third-party assistive technology. So that, like the voice editing and formatting, which is a feature within our product, we also, within Docs, have what we call live edits, where it's a sidebar on the side of the screen where when multiple people are in the document and concurrently making changes, we summarize that information and put it into the sidebar so that, say, somebody who's a screener like me can go to the sidebar and know but say somebody else has been changing in the document. Or say if you're low vision, that's an easy way to do it to it. Or say if you have other disabilities, where it's easier to understand that because you get a nice summary of the changes that people are making in the document. Page change, slide 20 of 26 content. So another part of, you know, so accessibility I've been talking about is kind of what the individual does who may be using assistive technology. There's another side of this is that everybody who is creating content needs to make sure that it's going to be accessible for somebody who's going to be consuming it. And that includes things like making sure that there's proper heading markup or that alt text has been added to graphics and stuff, because that's the you know, best way to provide structural information and semantic information to somebody's user. And to make that easier, for example, in our products, the dog sheets, slides, and sites, we have our templates are designed that you'll get more accessible content by default for such things as you know, having the right contrast ratios so that you know, there's enough um, ratio between the foreground and the background or the text and the background. So I covered a lot of different information here. And there was just as only part of the accessibility features that we have, and it didn't get into some of the information on how to use it. So if you want to learn more about our accessibility features, there's two great places to go to, google.com slash accessibility, where you'll find information about G Suite plus our other products from Google. Also, if you're interested in G Suite Health Center articles, you can go to g.co slash G Suite Accessibility. And there's other resources for like education and 
other ways to get help information. Page change. Slide 23 of 26, get in touch. Also, we have several ways for you to get in touch with us. You know, we act, at Google, we have a disability support team, and you can find out how to reach them by going to g.co slash disability support. And also, for a few days after this recording is made available, there will be a Dory available where you can ask questions, and I will be looking at that and being able to provide answers to the Dory that's associated with this next presentation. Page change. Slide 24 of 26, final thoughts. Page change. Slide 25 of 26, inclusion empowers. So a few final thoughts here. You know, like, why is accessibility important? Why is inclusion important? Well, one of the things is we don't want to leave anybody behind by making sure that we're taking advantage of the accessibility features or allowing people to participate in the different activities. For example, if you're going to be setting up a meeting, you can set it up in calendar and send it out to everybody. You can even add a document to that so that people have it, which means they can have it added to the calendar, which will allow them to keep track of the information or when the meetings are. And then during the meeting, you can use Google Meet and turn on captions. Or you know, say if you're going to be doing a presentation using slides, you can turn on captions. Or somebody can turn on Google Meet if you're, say, doing a preparatory meeting, and they can get those captions, which means you know, they'd be able to participate in real time in this because they're able to understand and know what other people are saying and be able to participate in the meeting. Also, some other things you can do, say if you're using Google Docs, you can set it up and share it out so that people can be doing their notes in the document and sharing information that way, say instead of using a whiteboard. Because then somebody, say, who's using a screen reader or they're using magnification or higher contrast can go into that document and be able to follow along and contribute into that because they're able to access the information. Also, a Google document can be useful for, say, somebody who's nonverbal is now they're in something that everybody else is using and they're able to ask the questions and be able to participate. So again, the accessibility feature is kind of empowering the inclusion. And then the benefits from what you get from that is you'll have access to far more talent because again, 15% of the world population, there's a lot of people out there with lots of great skills that you'll be able to attract and retain because they're able to use the accessibility features. You also get a happier, more productive workforce because everybody is able to feel more included. If there's nothing, you know, one of the things say, if you're doing something and you share something out and say, if I can't see some important information because it's not accessible, I'm not going to feel included into the activities. Same thing for somebody who's deaf and hard of hearing. If they're not able to understand or know what somebody else is saying, they're not going to feel involved with it either. And that spills over to your colleagues or say if you're students. The other thing is you, know, you get better choices when you're able to have everybody involved. You know, there's studies out there that show that the broader participation that you have for the more diverse and inclusive workforce or students or education or community, you're going to get better decisions because you get a wider you know, input from a lot of different people. So you don't end up with better choices. So again, I do believe, and I hope you do believe that inclusion is super important because we want to be able to take advantage of everybody that's out there and allow them to be as successful and fully participate as they can be. Page change, slide 26 of 26, thank you. With that, thank you for watching this and I hope you found this presentation useful.